All right, so now we're gonna go over a ring dip. Uh, before we get into the nitty gritty details of the ring dip, let me just show you exactly what it is we're talking about. All right, so there you have a ring dip. What exactly is going on there is um, perhaps more than meets the eye. The interesting thing about the ring dips is that the rings become the weight. And like anything else, we want the laws of physics working in our favor, not against us. So if we allow the rings to leave away from our body when we try to mount up on them, uh, we're just actually making it a lot heavier, which is why very few people can do a movement called the Iron Cross, where you're like this, except my feet would be off the ground. Um, so the further the weight, the rings travel away from you, the heavier or the harder this exercise becomes. Uh, so the whole movement uh, when you're doing a ring dip, the idea is to keep the rings as close to you as possible. But it is not just a muscular exercise. It's, uh, it's an exercise utilizing the skeletal frame as well as the muscle. So while I'm using muscle to get my body weight up here, I'm now resting bone on bone, locked out, so that I'm not really using that much muscle. However, as soon as I start moving, it's gonna be muscular again. Notice the movement going up, how the rings stay extremely close to my body. This allows for better control of the movement. Same thing coming down. So I'm just really rubbing the rings and or my hands into my body while I'm uh, doing the movement. To ensure that you actually get a lockout at the top. Um, the new measure for legit is gonna have you turn your wrists outwardly. As you get to the top here, you're gonna have to do a full rotation and show that the elbows are locked out and then bring it back down. Going back up, it's gonna be a full rotation to show that there's lockout and control and back down. So there is what the ring dip is all about. It's a very advanced movement. It really works a lot. Shoulders, triceps, and chest muscles. We're going to take a look at how to ease yourself into a ring dip if you're not at that stage just yet. All right, so when it comes to ring dips, when you're first learning how to master balancing on a ring dip, the first recommendation I'm going to suggest is that the rings be lowered. Uh, approximately to the height of where your elbow would otherwise be. So keep it relatively low. And then your first step is gonna be simply controlling the balance. Remember, the rings have to stay close into your body. And then from here, even if you have to jump it, you can try to get your body up and try to maintain balance. There's a good chance that you're stronger going up only because you're gonna jump a bit and then what you're gonna to try to do is instead of doing this, just dropping, what I'd like you to do, keep the rings close to your body and just lower yourself down to the floor as controlled as you can. Believe it or not, it's the movement going downward, what we commonly, commonly refer to as the negative, that's going to increase your strength. So going up and simply dropping won't help you increase your strength. Up and try to control the movement as best you can coming down, moving down. This is gonna increase your strength. This is the best way to start learning how to do a ring dip. So if you're not at a level, uh, the advanced level of doing it legit, start it like this, and in no time you're gonna find yourself doing a legit, or at least an intermediate version, which we're gonna take a look at just now. All right, now let's take a look at an intermediate version of doing ring dips. First thing we're going to want to do is up the rings a little bit. Here I'm going to bring it up more to my chest height. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, a resistance band. And the resistance band is actually going to help uh, lift a percentage of my body weight, thus allowing me to focus on doing the correct movement all the while getting a pretty good, pretty good challenge. So what I've done was I've looped 
my resistance band into one of the rings. With the second uh, band, or the, the end of the band, what I'm gonna do is rather than loop it because you can't, I'm just going to rest it inside the ring while I hold it with my hand as I grip into it. And then what I'm gonna do is just elevate my body up and kneel into my resistance band. So this is actually gonna support my body weight coming down. I'm gonna try and keep my hip forward. So don't, don't go doing this where you're sitting in a squatted position. Keep your hip forward and then from here, I'm gonna lower myself down control and elevate myself back up. I'm sure you can tell just by my movement coming up, this is really quite easy uh, for me, but that's okay. Just progressively build yourself up to doing the legit version. So the movement is identical to doing it legit. The only difference is, again, the band is helping you. So here's the deal with the band, and this is what I want you to keep in mind. If you feel you're not getting enough resistance or enough help from the band, all you have to do is, is shorten it, right? So the more I have of the excess uh, looping over the rings, the more resistance help I'm gonna get from this. The longer I make the band, uh, the less help I'm gonna get. So you can adjust that according to how you're comfortable uh, doing the ring dip. Once you've mastered the control uh, at this level, uh, that's when you really wanna just simply take it off uh, and then start working mostly on what we call the negative movement, and that is coming down. Really, really control the downward movement. Again, you can start from the bottom, jumping up, it's fine, keep the rings very close to your body. Control the movement coming down. It is this downward control, I assure you, that will get you doing full ring dips in no time at all. That's your intermediate version of a ring dip.